For this question, I'd be thinking about what values of x are going to create different orders. And I'd think about that ahead of time. Not that I need to create an exhaustive list, but it is really helpful to have some context. We're given that x is positive, so that narrows things quite a bit. That leaves positive integers. And the other group that I think is important is the numbers between 1 and 0. And yeah, it could be that, that you have non-integers, like 3 halves, for instance. That's possible. But 3 halves is going to behave a lot like 2 or 5 when plugged into uh, these. Not really going to act any differently. When you put it um, underneath, it's going to make the number smaller. When you multiply it by 2, it's going to make the number bigger. When you raise these non-integers greater than 1 to a power, they get bigger. So they really behave the same as, as, um, as these other numbers. The numbers between 0 and 1 are different because these guys, when you raise them to a power, they get smaller. And when you put them underneath here in a fraction, uh, the number actually gets bigger. So they're behaving differently. And what we want in terms of the, the context is to find values of x that are going to change the order. So let's start with this first statement. And I would consider doing a little bit of algebra. Not that this fraction here is bad, but if you can get rid of a fraction, why not? And because x is positive, we can multiply across by x because we know that the sign is going to stay the same. I'm also going to flip things around just because I think that's a little easier. And now let's take this and think about it in terms of these things. So if we've got positive integers, let's say x is 2, that's definitely not going to work because these are both bigger than 1. Let's take a look at these. And it's what we were saying, that as you raise things to a power, they get smaller. So let's say x is 1 half then that's going to be all good. So statement one works. So we can get rid of everything that doesn't have statement one. For statement two, I would do the same thing. I would flip it around and I would multiply by x. And I can already see that plugging in positive integers is going to be problematic because of this. There's no way that if we plug in a number that's 1 or greater that we're going to make it so that x cubed is less than 1. So I wouldn't even try those. I would start over here. And let's notice that if you start with one of these numbers, this is no problem. x cubed is definitely going to be smaller than 1 if it's starting off smaller than 1 because the cube is going to make the number between 0 and 1 even smaller. The one that takes a little bit of thought is this one. So normally, with x squared, if you plug in a number between 0 and 1, you're absolutely going to be less than 1, so that's not good. But we're being multiplied by 2, so we need to find a number between 0 and 1 that when we square it and double it is bigger than 1. So basically we need a number that when squared is going to be bigger than a half, and the easy way to think about it is you want to have as big a number as possible that's below 1. And it's not that hard to come up with an example. I would just say 0.9. You could say to yourself 0.9 and 9 infinity, but I think it's simpler just to do that. And that is going to be 0.81. And when you multiply that by 2, it's definitely bigger than 1. And we already have the x cubed part of this taken care of, because this is definitely less than this. Statement 2 is all good, so we can get rid of this. And we can do the same thing for statement 3. We can flip it around, multiply by x. And you can already see, because you're going to have cubed and squared, 
that if you choose numbers that are greater than or equal to one, there's no way that you're gonna get them smaller than one. So we don't have to worry about positive integers. So we can take a look at our fractions. Again though, things are not going well here. Because the higher the power, the smaller the fraction. So whatever number you plug in between zero and one, this is always going to be smaller than this. x cubed is always going to be smaller than x squared when you plug in one of these numbers. And to add to that, they're even giving us the clue with the 2 that you're, you're even multiplying this one by 2. So there's no way, uh, given the numbers that we have, that we can make it so that x cubed is going to be greater than x squared. So uh, statement 3 doesn't work. So we're left with D.